Okay, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Anything that you want to share with the class? A personal experience or just anything to start the day? Say that again? Really nice. Really nice, yeah. This is like the perfect temperature for me. Like where I come from is most of, most of the time like this. Not too cold, not too hot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with this weather, it's, it, feels, it feels like it's the right weather. Yeah. Cool. So today we're going to learn about something called the CSS Flexbox. Um, and do you all remember that when I was talking about, basically we have two kinds of elements in CSS. We have the block element that occupies the entire width of a page. Like a paragraph is a block element, a div is a block element. And there are other elements that are inline elements, like images, input tags. Um, who can give me another example of inline elements that don't occupy the entire width? Peter? Buttons, yes. Um, and there are other smaller ones, uh, like the spans will be inline elements. Um, the strong tags, the italic um, elements as well. So. And then flexbox is, so all the elements that are block elements will be laid out on top of each other, basically creating a column. If you have, if you have like three divs, because the divs are uh, block elements, they occupy the entire width, you'll end up with a div on top of uh, the other two. So it will be, the content of the page will be laid out as in a column. We saw that in the, when we were building Let's go back to that. Um, when we had the CSS selectors lesson, let's open up CSS selectors HTML here. So we have that every one of these boxes that has that border black are divs, right? And these divs are on top of each other. Even though we have space, like we have space on this side, uh, so we could lay them out uh, instead of on top of each other, next to each other, as long as we have space, right? But um, the problem with that is if we click inspect, let me put this on this side, uh, we can still see that those divs are occupying the entire width of the page. Even if I re even if I resize this, um, the div this div is still occupying the entire width, and it will adapt the margin to occupy the entire width. Therefore, like this space here that we would like to use for let's say the next box to be on that side, it's already occupied. It's occupied by the margin of this um, box. Something we could do uh, is convert this block element into an inline element. And because inline elements are put next to each other, uh, that will allow us to put elements on top or next to each other. Another way that we have for that is CSS uh, Flexbox. And Flexbox, is, it stands for Flexible Box. Uh, it's not I really like that every, almost everything in this field is properly named, that names make sense, like Flexbox, the flexible box, uh, and other stuff like that. So, okay, so for an introduction to what the Flexbox is and how it works, uh, I think we first need to see the display property uh, on a CSS role. I saw that some of you, I saw them experimenting with the CSS, pro, uh, with the display CSS property of elements. Um, so let's do that here. Um, so does everyone have this page open? So that we can all inspect? No? 
let's let's open let's open this page. This was the last the HTML file on CSS selectors. I'm going to grab the water for Okay, so let's look at here. Once I select one of these divs, I can see um, in the style section of my developer tools all the styles that it's applying to this element. Right? If we scroll down, um, you will see some style that is being applied by what is known as the user agent. What's the user agent again? I think I briefly touched on it. What's another word for user agent? Joy, the browser. So these are this the user agent style sheet is the style sheet that the browser has by default for all the websites, right? and we can see that the browser is applying a CSS uh, rule to this div that says that the display property should be block. So this is what dictates what kind of element we are dealing with, uh, whether it's a block element or an inline element. So, what we could do is uh, specify our own display property and its value by clicking on the div, then going up here. And here, I want to do some live editing. So, there are two places that I could do that. One is I could click here at the bottom of my uh, rule that I have here, and then that will allow me to type in here, or I could also type in this element.style. Part. These are two places that you can write live CSS to experiment and play with it. So what I want to do is I want to, instead of this div that by default has a display value of block, I want to change it to display value inline and see what we get. So actually I'm going to lower, gonna lower this to the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna do select the first div. I don't know if this has enough zoom. Uh, and then here I want to apply the property display and I, I want to select inline. Oh, so we got something interesting. It turns out that we have Wait, what happened here? So it's, it looks like the this div is tiny. Do you see it up on the left corner? Let's remove let's remove some of this stuff. Let's see what happens. No, we want the border. Let's remove padding. 
the width. Let's do something like 600 pixels here. Oh wait, maybe I had to try inline block. Oh, so yeah, I was, I put inline, but I had to do this inline block. Uh, what's the difference between inline and inline block? I don't remember, but we can find out. Inline block. Let's see if this makes sense. Versus block. Oh, this seems to have some images. Uh, inline elements respect left to left and right margins and padding, but not top and bottom. Huh, that's interesting. So an inline element will not respect, you can give it a top margin and a bottom margin, and it will not respect them, it will not take them. Cannot have, a, cannot have a width and height set. This is another interesting one. So you cannot set the width and height of an inline element. No. So, but this one is interesting because we can do, we can set the width and height in an image. And an image is an inline element, so I'm not sure about this one though. Allow other elements to sit all to their left and right and then see where all their important notes there. So these are the block elements. Respect all of the all of the above. Force a line break after the block element and acquire the full width uh, if width is not defined. So we know we are familiar with this. And then inline block, allow other elements to sit to their left and right, respect top and bottom margins and padding, and respect the height and width. So it seems that the only difference will be uh, that inline block elements will respect the top and bottom margins. Um, I, I'm not sure about, cannot have the width and the height set. Does, that will mean that we cannot set the height and width of an uh, input box. I don't remember if that's true. But I, like what is uh, causing me to um, doubt this is because an image is an inline element, but we can do we can set the width and the height of that image. I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that the image is a replaced element. The image has to be fetched from somewhere else. Oh. Okay, so let's look at some stuff here. So display block, we saw that they put they're put on top of each other. Display inline, just like that. And display inline block will respect, oh, you can see here how like the, the second element here is broken down into two because it will fit in partially in the first line and then the, the other half on the second line. But if we do inline block, the, the width and height of those will be respected as well as its margin. So going back to this example, now that I said that this div was going to be inline block, we can see um, a very subtle difference. Like visually, what is the difference that we have between this element being an inline block versus being a block? Let's, let's look at the difference. This is what inline block now I'm going to remove this, and this is with block. Do we know any difference? Dran? Uh, correct. You are looking at this. Now this is when it's blocked, and we get all that margin that is automatic on the right side, that orange uh, color that when I hover over. Uh, but once I set it to display inline block, it's not, that margin is no longer there. That is my element, my div is no longer taking the entire width of the page. That means that now this page here is available for other elements. 
So let me refresh this, and I'll put, I'm going to put the first div in line block again. Um, okay, so we see that now the the right margin. Look, we can even see it here. So we have the margin. Uh, we said in this rule that is coming from our CSS that the margin should be 10 pixels all around, right, all around the element. Um, now let's remove let's remove this inline block, and let's see if the margin is in, is uh, 100 10 pixels all around as we scroll down here. So. In this box, the margin box, we see that there's 10 top, 10 left, 10 right, and 10, uh, wait, 10 left and 10 right. But we see that this, this is sort of lying to us a little bit, right? Because this is not 10 pixels. From here to there, there is more than 10, 10 pixels. Um, so that is the, when we have a block element, the browser will just add all the necessary um, Margin so that it becomes so that it occupies the entire width. So when I when I make that element be an inline block, um, we see that now when I hover over the margin, the margin is now truly ten pixels on all sides. Right? And then that makes this space to the right available. So for me to fill in this space with the next um, with the next div, what do I need to do? Let's look at this div. This div is still occupying the entire uh, width. So what would I need to do for this element to go up to the top on the right side? I mean, same thing as we did for the first one. Let's make this one, which is the second div. As I hover over here, let's make this one display inline block. Now we have that. It doesn't look great, but we put it uh, next to it, which is some advancement. Cameron, do you have a question? Uh, I'm just wondering why there's a little bit of space on the bottom. Uh, this. Oh, that's a good question. So Cameron is pointing out that there is these two corners are like not in the exact same uh, place, and there must be an explanation for that. Let's inspect this. Let's see. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure why they're not in the same place. I think, um, I suspect it will have to be with, now the browser has to calculate like where the line is, right? Like where, where a line breaks basically. Because this element, the third element is still a block element. Um, it will not get put on the, on the right side. And then the browser has to calculate where the line will actually break. Oh, I think it might be... No, do we have a... We didn't have a width. Oh, let's look at this. This div. Okay, so that is uh, it's kind of obscure, but you see this, the OL has a margin at the bottom. So that pushes the, that pushes the padding, and then the padding pushes the border uh, backwards, and then we end up with this. We end up, that we don't have the same, uh, if we look here, the OL that has that margin bottom, 10 or 16, that will push in the 
the padding of the box, which is this one, and the padding pushes the border, and so on. So remember that divs will be as high um, as the content requires it to be, to, to fit all the content. And therefore, in this case, we end up with that. If we, let's see, if we remove the OL, um, or rather, oh, and the same thing is happening on this one. This, uh, this uh, heading has a more, a mar no, this is a, a paragraph, has a margin as well. Um, and we end up with the, these margins pushing in the lower uh, border and the lower padding, make, making them uneven. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So it, it can become quite challenging to get them to be equal if we forget that the content uh, of the elements will affect how that looks. And it, it can be a really challenge uh, to get them to match, especially when you have like different content on different ones. You have to make sure that um, you analyze all the content. Okay, so we could just keep going if we do the same for uh, this links. Let's do the display in line block, and we get the same. Right, but this this might not be like what if we want them to a problem that CSS will solve that we're seeing here is one they are not aligned to the top or or they seem to be aligned to the bottom, right? But we could, what if we want to align them to the middle or to the top? That becomes much more challenging uh, with uh, the CSS that we have known so far. So like, what if I want, um, yeah, basically align to the top um, and or the bottom. And also, let's look at, let's look at what happens when I, do inspect. I'm going to put the inspect to the right side. And this is a nice thing, which is if we have the available space, our website will adapt. Right? Also, you could experiment with this, and this will become more and more important as we advance. Once you open the developer tools, you see this uh, cell phone, there's like a small cell phone and a tablet icon. Uh, you click there, and it will allow you to see what your website looks like on a, on a different screen. What it will look like on an iPhone, what it will look like on all these phones, what it will look like on an iPad. Oh, it even puts a frame. Uh, let's do 100%. Oh, no, that's not possible. 50%. Um, so we can see that my page will look really bad on an iPad. And we want to try like we want to try to be consistent. We want to oftentimes we have uh, we, we want what is called a mobile first uh, design, which is our website should look best in a small screen like in a phone. Uh, because most people now are visiting websites on their phones rather than on a computer. Right? So oftentimes we start to um, and it will become more and more um, obvious as to why we should start thinking about what our website will look like on a small screen uh, rather than what it will look like on the big screen. You still want to account for both, uh, but you oftentimes give more importance to what it looks like on a small screen. So, okay, so here there is another option which is responsive. I'm going to lower this here. Um, and then this responsive allows me to like move this around uh, to see what my website will look like. And just because I have that much zoom, it's a little bit hard to see. And I seem to be having something weird going on. So let's look, let's inspect this. For some reason, like this heading text is being I'm not sure if this might be a bug on my Chrome. 
do you do you do you get this as well? No. Like do you do you you actually see the website the way that it should look like? Yeah. And you when you resize it, everything stays correct. Okay, so if, uh, it might be. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but it might be something in my CSS. Let's look at here. And that seems to be something related to the font size. But I only have that. Anyway, so it might be that my Chrome, let's try this on Firefox. Also, that is a good. It's a good, also a good practice to always try your website in different browser just to make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look. Um, this one has inspect as well. Same icon. Okay, so it does seem to be something with Chrome, even though I. Well, I, because I've been modifying these styles here in the browser, they're not saved, they're not, therefore they're not applying here. So let's do them here real quick. Online block, display, inline block. Yep. Okay, so it's something with Chrome that my version is whatever. Maybe I'll need to restart Chrome, but anyway. So important that you know where to find this so that you can resize your website and see how it adapts or how horrible it looks if uh, you haven't taken care of, of that. We're going to get to see some of that. Cool, so let's try uh, one. Oh, look at that. I have no idea. Okay, so let's look at some example of um, good, what this is, having your website adapt to different screen sizes is called uh, responsive design. Your, your website will respond to whatever screen is being displayed on. It's like when, you, when you're visiting a website on your phone, um, and then you flip your phone from portrait mode to landscape mode, and then the website will adapt. You as developers will need to take care of that. So we'll take care of how the website will look once the, once the website has more width uh, than height, etc. cetera. Um, and that, that is what is known as responsive design. So let's look at some example. If we go in here in the lesson, we have the example is the New York Times. Um, and this is, an, this is a good example because we have sort of what I was explaining earlier where let's say this uh, section here is to, is to the left of this, the opinion section for instance, right? And we are putting elements like next to each other rather than just on top, the way that we've been doing it for the most part. And here, let's inspect how this will look on an iPad. So right click inspect. Um, let's type in iPad, and we can see how the website adapted to to be displayed on the iPad. We can see that we no longer have the opinions uh, column to the right. That probably was moved to the bottom or somewhere else. Uh, but we can just see that the content was. Um, reshape so that we can fit the, all, all the available space. And let's go on responsive and let's see like change more live. So I'm gonna run this. And then we can see that there it changed. Now that, that one is like the main story. Now, in, now everything is like on top of each other, right? Um, we have the first div, which is the first uh, news and so on. Cool. So make sure you you try this, you give this a try for yourself uh, on any website. You will also able to like the top left screen and check the camera and drag it. Like what it exits? 
Uh huh. Oh, here? Yeah, like that. Yeah, that will be another way, yeah. Um, this will be if I. I also could just resize my screen in this way, and the website will also just adapt to whatever screen size it has available. Thank you. Hi, I think I saw. I, some time ago, I had posted something on the random channel. See, it's still there. I don't think it is here anymore. That you will, there's, you can, now in the web, you could even see how, like, where this window is and its movement. Uh, and then you could also have the content of your website um, behave in different ways as you move the screen. So the sample was uh, you could think of the screen as like a container of water, and you actually have some like something that simulated water inside, and you will shake the screen or you will shake the window, and then the water inside will move. Um, but that's that's sort of uh, a side note to the stuff that we could do with. Uh, with CSS. I don't know how to do that, by the way, but there is, um, luckily, uh, all the people that do that cool stuff put their code uh, online so that you could look at it. Okay, so everyone got to experiment a little bit with moving, resizing their window and see how the content was adapting to that. So we, we achieved somewhat of that by um, giving these elements uh, an inline an inline block display, right? And we were able to put them together, but the problem that we saw was what if we want to align it to the top, what if we want to align them to the middle, um, and how can we achieve that? So that is basically the problem that CSS Flexbox wants to solve. So uh, let's do an example where if we go to the lesson, we have this HTML. I'm going to copy this. So I, I encourage you to do the same. I'm going to come, I'm currently in my unit 2 folder. Here I have a folder called CSS Flexbox that is empty. I'm going to create a file called Flexbox HTML and also flexbox.css. I'm going to open that with my text editor, Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to paste the HTML here. Okay, so this is um, actually I'm gonna give you. Let me let me know once you have this page. Uh, oh, I I made two files. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, this, um, the CSS will experiment with it first. Mm -hmm.
for everyone who has the page. So this is a very simple page. It has um, the head and the body. The body has a div inside, uh, and there is just a few images in there. Oh, also, you will need to update, depending on what you call your CSS file, I'll need to change it here because this is the link that is linking to the CSS file, and I call my CSS file flexbox.css. I'm going to change that hit there. Even though my CSS is empty at the moment, we're going to leave it empty uh, for now. Cool. So now open this in your browser. So I'm going to quit my browser um, just so that just to make sure that we don't get weird behavior again. Make sure that the stream's still alive. And so if you're in the terminal, I uh, could, could open flexbox.html and I'll open my file in the browser. So this is what we have. Is everyone seeing the same? Maybe, maybe you're seeing this. So note that also here, this is somewhat dynamic. As I remove the zoom or add zoom, new images, all the images will fit in one line. Or if I add zoom, then the space is reduced and we have to break down um, into multiple lines. Right, so, okay, what does, why are we seeing the images next to each other? Okay. They're inline elements. So if we inspect, look that I'm not lying. Uh, let me exit out of this. Uh, I click on this image here and then I scroll down. We should see. Oh, damn it. It doesn't show in like the way that the div shows block. Do you remember that the div did show a block? Uh, this one seems to not show up here, but let me introduce you to this other tab, the computed tab. This has all the styles that are applying in a different way. Just like this shows you like all the styles by the CSS rules, and this one just shows you all of them all of the properties in general. You don't know what style, uh, what rule is applying or where it's coming from. We can see here that grayed out, we see inline display property inline. Right? We can see other stuff like the height. This is the, this height is not set in CSS. Right? This height is the actual height of the image, is the actual dim dimensions of the images. And there is this toggle here, show all, that will show you, uh, I think, near 230 properties that CSS have. Uh, and those that are grayed out are either because they are default, or actually, yes, the, this, the ones that are grayed out is because they are the default um, properties. Yes? Uh, computed, uh, yeah, oh, some of you don't have it? Uh, what if you click here, on this arrow? If you click this arrow, you probably have it on there. So let's take some time to explore some of the computed properties. <laughs>
Okay, so it turns out that the browser itself is implementing some sort of um, adjusting as we as we resize the window. So some people were not seeing the computed property or the computed tab because when this is sufficiently big, oh, actually, I have to go here. Let's remove some. Actually, let me close this. Open it again. Maybe for me it will always show. No, so some people uh, the computer tab was not here, but they will have they will have under here the basically all the information that the computer tab will have. Um, and as we resize as we, we resize this window, that computer property will be there or disappear. I think yeah for for some reason mine is not doing that. Maybe I have to update Chrome. But um, anyway, I think we all found the computer property. So here we just verified that um, an image is display, an image display property is in line, right? So that's why we get them all on the same line and not uh, on separate lines. So cool. So let's see now actually what the flex uh, property will do. Also, so for applying the flex box to the property to the an element, we use the display property. So we have display inline block, we have display block, we have another one. So actually, let's look at all of the ones that we have. So I'm going to click here on the div that is uh, wrapping all the images. Right, this image with a class name images div. I want to add a, a display property to it here, and as you as you type display and hit tab, you get a list of all of the possible values to for it basically. So here you select the div. Basically, you select any element that you want to style. In this case, I want to style this div. I go on my styles tab. Uh, on the elements dot style, and I hit, and I, here I'm going to type display. I can hit tab or enter, and then it will allow me to set all. See, first it shows me all the properties that all the values for the properties that I can pick from, um, and we got uh, we got block, we got content, we got flex. So we can see that flex is one of them. And as we select flex, uh, some stuff goes on, right? What do we? What are we seeing happen? The margins uh, or the spacing between the images disappear. What else, Peter? All the images become the same size. And look at look at how now we don't have two lines of images. We have just one really long one. All the images get put in one line, basically. Uh, so if we keep going, look at now there is another one grid that we're gonna get to see la later. Um, let's do. Let me put this on this side. Oh. This is when people were not seeing the computer tab. See, yeah, I don't have the computer tab. The thing is that that will be displayed here on this side. Anyway, we are in the div. Uh, I am modifying the display property, and we are moving around here to see all of them. We got grid, inherit, initial, inline, inline block, inline flex. Uh, a whole bunch. Oh, this one is a good one. 
this one might be might help you in your hangman game. If you put this plane on, what do you get? Right? Surprisingly, you get nothing. That's this is how you could hide elements. Uh, maybe you don't want to remove them from the DOM, you just want to visually hide them. Uh, you, you can think of your hangman game as you could have all the body parts of the of the person uh, there, they're just hidden, and as you fail, as you do fail attempts, they will become visible by setting in, uh, by removing the display none and putting uh, display something else. Yes? Is there a difference between like visibility hidden and display none? Oh, so there's another one called visibility? You're saying? Oh, okay. I didn't remember dice, but it seems to work the same. I would not know the. Um, I don't know the differences, but I'm sure a uh, simple Google search display non versus visibility can give you some answers. Yeah. Could you flip them again and see if you can highlight just to see if display non. So it looks like visibility is just hiding the element visibly. Okay. But maybe display non actually takes it over, like, so it's not pushing things down. Okay, let's see that. So here, we're applying visibility, and the visibility property is hidden. But I can still hover over the element, and I can sort of still see where they are. Uh, let's see if that changes when you hit display none. Oh, there you go. We found one difference. That the elements are actually uh, apparently removed. Right? They're still in the DOM. But they're just, you're unable to tell where they are. Where visibility hidden um, will allow you to see where they are. So maybe, yeah, cool. We all learn. Thank you. Okay, so let's put, let's go back here and. We have this. Uh, now we want to go on my CSS file and I want to grab the element with the class name images div. We do that with period images. And what I want to do is apply a display property that is equal to flex. So I'm going to go to my page and refresh and we get what we were saying which is there is no space between images and all the images become the same uh, height. Was everyone able to replicate this? Maybe your CSS is not linked correctly. You can inspect the style, see if the style is applying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the moment, this is now better. This is now better than. Uh, well, like, there is some. I guess some advantages. One is it will make all the images the same height. That might or might not why be what you want. Um, but now we have this inconvenience that we have to like scroll sideways. Um, and before we move on, I want to show you this is a resource that is linked in the lecture notes. CSS flexbox. Um, for all things CSS, this website called CSS Tricks is great. Um, I think I showed. Uh, yeah, I. I I had already shown you this, but I didn't. I think I didn't emphasize how great this website is. Um, do you guys remember when I showed you? Um, I showed you some stuff here.
right? Like these animations and that we can change the color. Now we know how to change the color once the mouse is on an element. We could, so we could do something like this. We might not be able to get that animation at the bottom yet, but we at least can make the color change as the user hovers over it uh, with the, what's the name of the pseudo class? And hover, right? Um, okay, so yeah, like be sure to check out this website that has all the CSS tricks. Uh, so what we're interested in is this great, this, um, this uh, flexible guide from CSS trick is just great. They are, I think, one of the most complete ones. So in here we get, we get some of the background, like why, which is something that I had, I think, talked about. Um, which is, it, it's really hard to put stuff where you want by just having block and inline elements. Um, and those are somewhat less flexible. And that's what the problem, that's the problem that Flexbox wants to um, solve. So make sure to, to read uh, this. And here I wanted to draw your attention to this graphic, which is, once we, dis once we declare a container or a div uh, to be display flex, it, it will abide by these rules, which is it will have something called the main axis and the cross axis. And this, uh, then we'll see some properties that will put, put elements based on this axis. For instance, we could have a property that will align the items on the main axis. That is this uh, horizontal line, and then all the elements will be on the same, aligned at the center, basically. There will not be one on top of each other, or there won't be one higher than the other. It will all be aligned uh, on the main axis. And here we'll have flex items. So this flex item, for instance, will be one of our images, right? Uh, and then the flex item two, and so on, until we get our until actually we put all the elements and we end up with that one line of images, right? So I want to read from here. Items will be laid out following either the main axis from main start to main end or the cross axis from cross start to cross end. That is to say that element one will be put close to main start and so on until you get to main end, right? And the note here that also it says, or the cross axis from cross start to cross end. It says or because it turns out that we can flip the axis. So we can say start laying down from the top and now center on, um, hopefully this will make sense once we get to actually see it. But you can flip the axis so that elements are not laid. So elements, I think it will be just easier to demonstrate that to explain. So, okay, and then by default, let's look at, okay, let's look at some of the properties for the container. So the container is the parent element, in this case, the div, and the inside has images, right? So we call the container a flex container, and we call the items inside the container flex items, uh, or here. Right, so we saw that the display we say display flex. Now we have something called a flex direction. So we can see what, in what direction the elements will be laid out. So let's play with this one. Let's go on our page, refresh this. I'm gonna remove this in a little bit. Now I want to add a flex direction property. And we have a few values for that. One is column. Actually, let's play live with this. I'm going to remove this. The other thing is that if we do it here, inspect. So here I picked the images div, right? And I'm going to say flex direction. 
And I hit tab, and I have a couple options here. Um, so I have column, column reverse, inherit, initial, row, and row reverse. So let's play with some of this. I want to I want uh, to like cycle through this. So we get column, and we get this uh, behavior where the images are all in like the same uh, on different lines, and but they get stretched to the entire width. You got column reverse. Which just seems to revert the order. Let's look at the let's look at this image is sort of like a two or four threes. Now we reverse, now the trees will be at the bottom. Okay. Initial or inherit initial, those don't uh, seem to affect anything. We have row uh, and then row reverse. Row reverse, what does it do? Right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. It's properly named. It reverses the row. Now we get. Um, oh. Point reverses three. Say that again? Seems to delete the rest and reverse the Well, we have Flex direction. Column. Row reverse. Oh, that's another thing. So we saw that the the row was inverted or reversed, but it seems to like cut this image down around here. I'm not sure if that's actually correct behavior. So I'm going to take this property uh, and just put it in my CSS file. Let's do that. Flex direction. Uh, column reverse. So I just took it from my live editing playground in the browser and put it in my CSS file. Save that. Uh, close this. Expand this and just refresh. Oh, did I put column? Yeah, row. row reverse. Refresh. Huh. I wonder, I'm a little bit startled here because it shouldn't be cutting this one out. Because it cuts it off right where you can see it. So whatever it's seen, it takes that and does it. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't, it, if we have it, so we, we found out that the, the default is direction the flex direction direction by default is row. You see that row gets us the exact same uh, behavior that if we don't have anything. So by default, uh, once you have a flex container, the direction will be row, and every all the elements will be laid out in one single row. Um, So this is what this is talking about. Flex direction, you get row. This is that, that version. This is reverse row. Then you get column, uh, and then reverse column. Right? And this will dictate how the elements get laid out, even uh, reverse or not. Also, this flex direction, once we have flex direction uh, column, uh, the the main axis and the cross axis get inverted. Now the main axis will be the vertical axis. No, yes, the vertical axis and the cross axis will be the horizontal axis. Um, and we're gonna see how that will affect uh, the way in which we can apply other properties. Like once we want to align them to the bottom or, or the start. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's do, actually, yeah, let me just check exactly what we're after this. Flex, oh, so flex wrap, let's look at this. Um, very properly named as well. Um, I want to put it flex wrap. Uh, for this, I have these options, inherit, initial, not wrap, onset, 
and wrap. If you get wrap, even wrap reverse. See all the flexibility that we get with Flexbox. Um, so if we do flex wrap, then it turns out that the column will be only as wide as the screen and it will be broken down after no other element fits and we put all the elements, all the remaining elements will be put on a separate line. Right? And this is not very different from what we have initially, right? All the lines were next to each other. Uh, they had some spacing in between and the images that didn't fit on that line, they will be just put on a separate line. Um, I want to see if this affects anything or any questions here so far. Okay, I want to see if this uh, flex wrap affects anything of the flex direction. So the flex direction, remember by default, is row. Uh, I want to try to change it to column and reverse row. So now we see how the row, we still have one row, it's just that the row is being broken down in multiple lines. We can think of it as broken down in multiple lines. Um, and once I hit row reverse, it will actually reverse the, the row, right? Oh, so you stopped it by using wrap? Yes. Okay. I am, I'm still unsure why exactly it was conning. Oh, I know. Yes. I sent Cool, let's check. If it doesn't reverse the order, then it flips the entire image. Row reverse, uh, row. So I don't know if it like, cuts it off with the width of the page, but it flips the images instead of putting them in a different order. Uh huh. Wait, I think I'm confused. So it goes to the bottom. Uh huh? It like flips it to the other side of the page and it's going to reverse. It's not just putting it. It like it doesn't oh. where it is. It keeps that where it is and it breaks it backwards. I see. So I think I think that sort of makes sense. Um, here, this is the row, and then. When we hit row reverse, it's as if we have this on a card and we just flip the card, then they go to the other side. The entire thing goes to the other side. And here, when we have, let's remove the flex wrap. When we have row reverse, uh, this is sort of obscure, but if we have flex direction, row reverse, what happens is it flips the entire, the entire div, right? And then, by default, the browser will add space uh, going from left to right, but it won't add any space on the opposite direction, which is right to left. If you have something that goes from, like, from the right side to the left, uh, the browser will not add any other space and let you scroll. It will just cut your image right there. Does that make sense? Um, when we have row, the extra space, uh, this the page is asking the browser to give it space uh, from left to right, and that the browser can do. Uh, but it cannot give space from right to left, which is what happens when we have row reverse. Um, which may be good or not. Uh, and somewhere, somewhere in how Flexbox works, there must be uh, a note on, on this kind of behavior, or whether how Flexbox works, or how the browser itself uh, works. Um, cool, that's, that was interesting. Okay, so we know that, at least we know that something that we get out of this is we need to watch out for our content, um, make sure that we get what we want, uh, and not leave elements like that. But we can fix that if we do flex wrap, because then now the container becomes uh, able to break, to still occupy the entire, uh, to still use all the available space and wrap that line as, as it doesn't have any more space on the sides. Um, so flex 
wrap will allow the row to wrap. What do you think what will happen if I try to wrap a column? Let's see. First, it looks it looks pretty ugly, uh, and we don't see any kind of wrapping taking place. We'll maybe expect that we'll get a column, and maybe just going here. Let's add a class to let's style all the images. Oh no, this is not this is not where I'm at. I'm on this one. Ing with Let's do 300 pixels. Save that. Go to the browser and refresh. Oh, but I lost all my style that I was experimenting with. But let's just put it here. Uh, flex direction, we said column. And we say flex wrap. So we're trying to see if the column will wrap. I hope I haven't. I didn't try this beforehand, so I don't know if it's going to work. Oh. And then here, refresh. Ah, uh, so it's not wrapping. We get the column. Not all the images are 300 pixels, but it's not wrapping. Now, why do we think it's not wrapping? I think it's related to what you said. Uh, sad, it's just in the opposite direction, yeah. Uh, the more stuff you add, the bigger it doesn't have space at the Correct. This, uh, the browser will just keep adding space. If you need more space, it just keeps adding space, and you could have infinite scrolling nowadays. Um, but what happens if we control the width or the height? Maybe it will wrap. Let's do image div, let's do height. Maybe. I don't know, 600, 700 pixels. And now let's cross our fingers. <laughs> Refresh. And we have them wrapping. Say that again, a little bit louder. What do you think is relevant to the IT webpage? That seems like. Uh huh. So, like, you will. You don't want to give height to your web page. You want to give height to elements in your web page, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, or images, etc. Yeah. So we saw that now that happened. The so you see, like the thing is, is like this graphic that we have here. Will you just flip it around once you do direction row? Uh, this graphic basically. This is the default, it will be a row, but once we have this uh, flex direction column, we flip this uh, from that position to be vertical, from horizontal position to be vertical, and we get, um, we get what we currently have, which is a column, and if we do flex wrap, it turns out that now it wraps the column from going basically uh, like this. we end up with the column sort of wrapping like this. And that's what we currently have on our page in here. The, this is the third image, I believe. This is the first image, second image, third image, fourth image. Also, actually, I just remain, remind, oh, look at that. That was interesting. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I wanted to show you a real world example, which is actually something that the JR class did, uh, which they clone their, they, no, they, they clone, uh, later on in the curriculum, we have like, you will clone an app. And some of them clone Tumblr, some of them clone Instagram, some of them clone Pinterest. Uh, and Pinterest has this cool effect that is, uh, Probably using Flexbox, which is this. You see how? Actually, let me uh, log out. How did I log out from here? I 
don't know how to log out. <laughs> uh, you can tell that I don't use this website much. Uh, you can see that background um, where we have like those images. We could speculate that there. I think I saw some of uh, JR's classmates using Flexbox to uh, make this effect in the background where you have images and then they wrap around in columns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we saw that and then we got this really interesting thing which is space around. Hopefully that has an explanation as well. So, okay, let me see what we have next in here. I think uh, we have flex direction, flex wrap, we saw that. Oh, uh, okay, so I think the next thing will be align items. Uh, so I'm going to go back to this. It, it was a great experimentation that we had with setting the height um, and the width of the, of the images so that they don't take the entire width and we wrap the elements. But, so look, look at what you get once you do just column. Flex direction column, you get uh, that the elements will be basically, let's, let's look at it from here. Let's look at it from here. Um, oh, and no rock. Let's look at it from here. The, so, the thing is, <laughs> let's remove the entire CSS, let's refresh, and we get this. This is what we started with, right? So once I give the this container the display flex property, uh, we get only one row, and all the images are of the same height. That is, uh, by default, the display uh, flex in the container makes the children um, occupy the entire, in reality is the entire width or height depending on what axis, on what's your main axis. If the main axis is the horizontal axis, uh, then uh, flex, the flex item will be all of the same height. If your main axis is the vertical axis, uh, all the flex items will be of the same width. And that's what we're getting here. I know that that might be um, a mouthful. Let's look at it here. So look at it here. Uh, we have display flex. So we can see that by default, not all images are of the same height, right? Like this image here is um, how many pixels? 212 pixels high. Uh, and this one is 240 pixels high. But once I make the display flex, I make the container display flex, all of them suddenly become of the same height. And I forgot what was next. <laughs> so we do that. So, okay, now we see that they become the, um, the entire, the, the height becomes the same for all. And then if we just change, if we change the flex direction, which will affect the main axis, then we still got, we're still seeing the same thing. Uh, which, it's just that we flip the axis, and now all the elements are the entire uh, width. And in, in this case, actually, here, all of these elements will be as high as the tallest uh, picture. Uh, I, don't, I don't know which one is the tallest picture, but once the, the tallest will determine the height of the flex container, and then because the container is of type flex, uh, then the container dictates to the children to be, to stretch to fit the entire um, of the available space. Peter? Uh, let's try it out. Let's do portrait. I don't know, like phone photo. That will be. Like, oh no. 
What? It's showing me like stuff to buy in the images search? Let's look at them. Um, Like one of these images. Mm -hmm. Open image in new tab. Save that. Uh, now I'm going to go to my Flexbox HTML. Add another image here. Replace that. Now let's see. Let's see if I was wrong or right. Uh, let's refresh this page and we have all the elements be as high as the tallest photo. Right. So look at what happens if we if we say to this image be no be display none we, then we can toggle it as we see that Yes. Uh, if if every image is the same uh, width. Oh, I could just grab um, a CSS selector. I could use a, uh, I could use the image CSS selector, which will select them by the tag name, or I could give all the images a class mm -hmm, and and do it that way. Mm -hmm. Other questions here. So. Okay, so this is all to illustrate that once we have the images div, which is of type flex, now we say flex direction be column. Um, we have that all of them. Oh, where is the phone? Uh, all of them become. I don't know how, like, there must be an accurate language for this that I'm not using. Let's go here. Um, oh, I think that's the next property that we're going to see. Flex shrink, flex wrap. Oh, okay, so I think that the next con the next property we'll see is the justify content, and we'll see how that affects or the the align items. So yeah, recommended like a must read is this article um, that goes into more detail as to what we're talking about here. Um, but we can see so we saw the flex wrap. Um, this great lecture here um, we're not gonna get to get flex flow but we're going to see justify content um, so actually let's play with justify content so we can sort of see what what it does by these graphics also this uh, once you're doing like if you had experience with uh, Microsoft Word or even just like any document editing software that you can justify the text so that it's all like aligned to the left, to the right, or spaced around. Um, basically, this is the same thing. But this is also um, depending on uh, whether our main axis is the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. They will also change. It's the same way in which the wrap changes depending on what axis we're talking about. Um, so let's look at this. But for us to see this, oh, I think yeah, we could do it in the let me go to the other page, this one. Flex, we have this. To the browser. Yeah. Okay, so we have that. Now we made this. Let me just close this window. We made it wrap. Now is is wrapping like that. Now let's look at justify content. So justify content, we have all these values: baseline, center, end. 
Um, also, let's play with this live instead of uh, having to save and reload. Inspect. And okay, here. I want to just go to my images div rule. I click at the bottom to add a new one, a new property, and I want to do this uh, justify content. And then here, I'm going to start playing with some of this. So we got that, center, uh, we got end, flex end, flex start, inherit, initial, left, normal, right, sp save, space around, space between, Space evenly, start, stretch, uh, on save, on set. So just a whole bunch. So let's read. Let's read what the let's read what this says about justified content. This defines the alignment along the main axis. So that's an important point because the main axis we can we saw that we can change what the main axis is based on whether it's a column or a row. So this defines the alignment along the main axis. In this in this case, uh, with, what's our our main axis? The horizontal or the vertical axis? There was horizontal. horizontal axis. That's correct. But why? Yes. So because flex is uh, by default in rows. Correct. That's the right answer because we have the by default flex will be uh, the flex direction will be row, and row makes the horizontal axis be the main axis. So that's why when I do justify content, justify content it allows me to uh, align. The elements along the main axis, that's why I can see center and flex start. What do you think if I leave it center here and I change flex direction to be column? So let's put this one row, which is the default. By default, flex direction is row. What do you think? Actually, let's just have this uh, experiment yourself. Change the flex direction to be column and leave the justify content to be center. Although all your images are stretched. Actually, I, I didn't think that I was going to get the what I actually intend you to discover. But let's do flex direction column and then justify content center. So that didn't give us much. Uh, but let's let's try changing justify content to be other values. Baseline. Oops, doesn't do anything. Well then, why do, why doesn't it do anything? It's all in the definition of the justify content. Do this. Uh -huh. And because there's no center, like it's they're automatically in the center. Correct. They are automatic in the center because they're occupying the entire width. Um, and maybe it's what's it? Let me just check here. Yeah. Okay. So there is not, they're by default center because they're all occupying the, the entire width. But what if we change, so, so, okay, so let's go step by step. We change the, what's our main axis now? We have a column, so what's our main axis? The vertical now. So going up and down. So that becomes our main axis. And then this says the 
justify content that finds the alignment along the main axis, right? And then because all of them are occupying, they're all stretch occupying the entire width, then they will, there is no center, there is no left, there is no right, they're all just occupying the entire space. Um, so what happens if uh, I go in here and because I have, I want to select all the images and give them a defined um, width. So I'm going to click on this image, and because I have in my flexbox.css uh, in line eight, I have an empty uh, CSS role that is trying to select the images. Um, so I'm here. I'm going to say width 300 pixels. Okay. Now the images are 300 pixels. And now I want to go back here oh, and say justify content. Oh, we got the same thing. <laughs> That's a bummer. Well, uh, Let's see, the div is this, is justify content. Okay, so done. So this is the justify content aligns the elements on the main axis, along the main axis. Here our main axis is, our main axis here is the vertical axis so I think I got confused myself um, in here we have the horizontal axis our, our main axis okay so we just see that justify content once we have the vertical axis that is when we have column will no longer make sense because is imagine imagine this but you flip it uh, to the right and that becomes our, that becomes our, this becomes our container basically. Imagine this, this image, but you just grab it and you flip it to the right. So let's, let's do that. Now we got this. Can I open this a little bit bigger? I guess I can't. Oh, <laughs> that's too small, but <laughs> done. So we literally just flipped it, and then we have this, right? And we saw that justify content will distribute the co the content inside of the flex uh, container, right? But because we have because we have it like that. And then we learn that uh, the website or the browser will just keep adding space if you need more. Uh, therefore, we no longer have the justified content. Uh, in this case, doesn't make sense because we just have infinite space going down, right? What do you think will happen if we go back to the um, image div and we give it a defined height? Let's give it a height of 800 pixels. So we get the 800 pixels. Let's now ch try to ch justify by other options. So this is difficult to wrap our hands around but uh, it's all the main concept is how we're uh, switching what the main axis is and then realizing that once we have flex direction column then the justify atom will uh, will sort of flip the container and then not, not the justify atom, the flex direction column now the justify 
content because the definition is it will change, it will align the elements along the main axis, but now the main axis is vertical, and the a website, if you just keep adding content, it will just give you a scroll bar to keep scrolling. Um, in this case, we just gave that div a defined height. Um, therefore, it will not just keep adding content. It will not just keep uh, giving me a, a smaller and a smaller um, scroll bar. Um, I get I get what we have currently on screen, and now we can see the justify content um, taking effect by, uh, and then uh, we do like space around, for instance. Now all the images will have some space around, space between, space evenly, um, and so on. So let's go this. Now the main axis is the horizontal axis because now we have a row. And let's look at how this will modify also here. Baseline center and inherit space around, space between, and then this gives you just more flexibility to uh, lay out the content of your website. Okay, so we learned that justified content, actually questions or comments before we see the sort of the opposite of justified content. So we have yes. What will be the default? That's a good question. Uh, let's remove it from here, um, and let's go on the competed, and let's find here. The default we will be justify normal, and that we sort of don't know what that means, and is not one of the listed here. Let's look at okay, so actually it says that the default uh, says is flex start items are packed towards the start line, so and that is probably normal is just a, a probably another word for the same thing, uh, but this will be flex start is the default. all the elements will be um, aligned to whatever the flex. Uh, start is, yes, which if we go back to this graph, oh, where was it? Here. It will be either the main start, or if we if we have a column, the cross start. Okay, so the other property that we need to see is, so justify content, aligns the content along uh, the main axis, and we have Align items, which does sort of the opposite. You can think of it as uh, um, sort of the opposite, and it says it defines the default, default behavior of for how flex items are laid out along the cross axis. And then we that will allow us to do flex start, flex end, center, stretch, baseline. So let's experiment with our website. Let's refresh this. Uh, okay, so let's look let's look back at what we have in our CSS. We just have flex wrap, flex direction column, um, and that's it basically. So we said that Align items will affect the alignment across on the cross axis. So we saw in here, what will be our cross axis? We have display row. So our main axis is the horizontal axis. And our cross axis will be the vertical axis. So let's see what we have if we do the default, which is flow flex direction row. And now let's do align items. Uh, we have actually, I think, the exact same uh, 
values for this property as the justified content. And we can see some stuff going on. So that's baseline. So you can see that baseline uh, will align all the elements at the bottom. Right? We can see that. Uh, actually, let's look at what the default is. Align items. And also this, yeah, you, like you only need to read uh, this page uh, for, for this to actually click. Uh, besides the practice that we're going to have in the afternoon. Uh, this defines the default behavior for how the flex items are laid out along the cross axis on the current line. Think of it as the justify content version for the cross axis. This is why like, you can think of as one, the opposite of the other. And then the default is something called stretch. Uh, a stretch to fill the container with respect Still respect min and width, min width and max width. Uh, okay, this will still respect the width that we set in the element. But the default is stretch. And this is actually what explains why when you have display or flex direction column, you see it occupying the entire width because the, let's see if I can illustrate this, because the, by default, in the cross axis, we have the value of stretch. So if we think about it, in here, so this is our main axis. And then this is our cross axis. And then we, we get our elements on here. Right? And let's read this definition again. Defines the default behavior for how the flex items are laid out along the cross axis. So what's our cross axis here is the horizontal axis once we uh, have a column. And then we by default we have the value is stretch. That means stretch this element to occupy the entire width of the container. That's why we see that once we, we have um, the flex direction column, it gets stretched because by default, this property uh, on the align items property is stretch. So let's, let's play with that in here first. And then we're gonna get to see that one one more time. Flex, flex wrap, flex direction row, um, and let's do align items. So let's uh, let's draw this. So here we can see this is when we have um, column and we have when we have row. So so we currently have what's on the right side, right? Okay. So looking at align items. Align items will affect the behavior in which elements are laid out along the cross axis. So what's our cross axis on there? On this side, right? The vertical axis. So that means that align items will affect how elements appear, 
how elements move or get aligned here. If we had more, uh, the aligned atoms will affect whatever, however elements get laid out in the cross axis. So if we go in here, let's do aligned items. Remember that the aligned items, what's the default value? Stretch. That is also why all the images become the entire uh, um, height here, the, the same height, or the height of the tallest photo, um, right? Because the because by default we have stretch, and we can see that once we change to something different that stretch, now all the images are not the entire uh, the same height, right? And basically here we don't get much changing. Well, we get this flex start, and then flex end. That. That flex start will be the start of the cross axis. We either want to align to the start of the cross axis or the end of the cross axis. So that's why when I change from flex end, all the elements that are uh, this photo here and this photo here go to oh no line items. So here we get flex end, they all are aligned to the bottom. Center, they are in the middle. We can see this photo here with some uh, the same space at the top and the bottom. It's this one as well. Uh, end, flex end will be the end of the cross axis. Flex start, the start of the cross axis. Um, and we have, but by default we have stretch. Okay, so let's let's now look at if we have the flex direction column. And here we get the default behavior, which is aligned items will be stretch, right? Now because we have this, we have a column, and aligned items affects how elements are laid out in the cross axis, the cross axis. And by default, the value is stretch. We get all the images to be stretched in this way. But now let's look at this. Uh, look at what happens if we do align items and we set it to something different that, than stretch. Let's set it to baseline. Okay. Let's set it to center. And flex and flex start. Uh, let's do start. Oh, and that's, that's pretty much it. Safe. I don't know what safe does. Right. Let's do center. Then we get all of them center because Align items is affecting how elements get laid out in the cross axis, um, and that's why we get this behavior. So questions, comments, um, any thoughts? So. If you think about it, yes. Um, uh, the, was, to your point, um, we're seeing this affect images. Uh -huh. does, it, does it also affect text in what will distort text as well? Mm -hmm. So, yes, this example is with images, but if we had, let's say, instead of images, we have paragraph tags with text inside, they will still be affected in the same way. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's uh, let's maybe add one here. We see it there. 
What happens if it's longer? Yeah. So now this gives us a lot of control as to how we want to align our items. We could align on the vertical axis or the horizontal axis um, depending on whether we have uh, flex direction column or row. Um, see if, what else am I missing from here? Space around. Oh, let's do. Did we do? Uh, I guess we had it in the column. Uh, if we have. Have the image this. Let me just remove this p tag. Oh, let's just uh, these images. I want to say the say flex direction by default row align items center. So now the images are. Center in the 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 line items will affect the cross axis, so the elements are centered uh, along the cross axis. And if we do now, let's add here justify content. Uh, justify content will affect the elements in the main axis. So if I do like flex. Baseline center and uh, flex end space around will uh, add space around all the elements, space between, space evenly, start, etc. So, with these two properties align content and align items and justify content, we can see, we can dictate how the content in our websites will be. Uh, aligned both in the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. What do you think is going to happen if I do this? Oh. Well, so we see we see that once we change the flex direction to column, only uh, which one will apply? Justify content or align items? The one we know that once we have a column, if we have something, whatever is affecting the main axis, if we don't have a set height, will not give us any result because the the page will just add a scroll bar and you can just scroll uh, as long as you have content. So here, if I if I disable the or if I say flex direction column, the the justify content that is affecting the main axis is not really doing anything because again we just have this call bar. Uh, if we wanted to do something, we could say height uh, 800 pixels. Now let's enable this one. We can see that now we have we are affecting. It will affect how they happen. Look at this align items by default stretch, right? Justify content on the justify content. We see it affecting the main axis. The main axis is the column or the horizontal, the vertical axis, right? And we can see how the elements are laid out there. The align items will affect the cross axis. The cross axis, the horizontal axis. Therefore, it will dictate how the elements are spaced uh, out. Other questions, common thoughts, ideas that we should try, that we should explore. So what will happen if I move this? 
power, so that's not very flexible. What if I space between flex direction columns, so the main axis will be that. Right, oh, I think this is constrained because of we have, so that's another thing to have in mind. Here, because I have set a fixed height, uh, then the div will not will not grow to will not grow downward uh, to fit the elements. So let's do let's do it this way. Let's set it to row. Uh, we don't have a set height, therefore, uh, as I resize my screen, the element is just free to occupy the available space. And if we get it to this point, we got just one column, basically. We can see how the content will fill in the available space, which is really handy uh, once you're doing websites. Let's see, okay. Um, <coughs> Okay, let's take a five minute break or till 12. And then we're gonna get.
Okay, so coming back uh, for this uh, next hour, we are going to look at, pull up the CSS and HTML that we were working with, where we had like the cat photo, um, which was part of the CSS selectors lecture. Uh, if you have, if you know where your files are, I have my uh, file, my folder's name the same as I, as the lecture, so I have CSS selectors. And we want to use, actually I guess I'll, I'll select this file so that everyone has the same. Uh, code. So everyone download those files, um, save them somewhere in your computer. I'll also suggest you rename them. Um, CSS. It's kind of cold. It's kind of cold? Uh, you can tell you are. I think you were the one that changed. Okay, so download these files that I just put on um, 6.2 web code. These are the files that we were uh, using for the CSS selectors lesson. And what we're going to do is add some 
Flexbox styling to it. Um, I guess I'm going to download them myself to another uh, CSS selector. Actually, I guess I can just move them from here. CP to copy. CSS selectors. I want to do HTML. Actually, I want to copy everything and put it in the current folder. I do ls. Now I have my two CSS selector HTML, CSS selector dot CSS. So I'm going to rename them so that I don't confuse them with a flexbot regular. Um, CSS. I'm gonna just call it Flexbox. I'm just renaming those files that I sent you on via on Slack. I'm just renaming them to flexbox2.html and flexbox2.css. And if you remember how to rename files from your terminal, you use the nb command. I'm just going to name them flexbox2 dot html and css so I end up with this uh, with this file structure I have two flexbox uh, css and two flexbox html the first one is the one that we were working on during class today and the other one were the old the old ones that we did were we were working with selectors so everyone just make sure to locate the file that gives you this page um, as well as its css Because uh, this 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 part will be, um, we want it to be hands on. So let me go back to VS Code. So I should create this. Now I guess open open that with your editor. And then we have Flexbox HTML, Flexbox CSS. So everyone has these two files open in their text editor. Cool. So one thing that I noticed is that my styles are not applying. We had styled this where the cats will have a round, uh, a, a circle around, and a border of that was pink and some pixels. Why is my CSS not applying? Perfect. Yes, I changed the fi the file name uh, from CSS selectors to flexbox 2css uh, I'll need to change that here if I want if I correctly want to link my page. Also, if you go here and you hit inspect, you will see that you have an error in the console. See this one X here. And you go console, you get fail to load resource. And it says error file not found. And it says CSS selectors.css1. So basically, it failed to load this resource, which is the CSS that I had. Right? It couldn't find that file because in my current folder, there is no such file. Um, so to fix this, I go to my HTML and I change here to flexbox to that CSS. Now I go back to the browser, refresh the page, and we still don't have anything. 
Why? Because I have a spell mistake. There you go. Cool. So everyone is here with me? <laughs> cool. Okay, so now we were talking about how it will be good to have like, um, since we have a space available to the right of our page here, to utilize that space. Right? And now we learn about the flex display property that we could add to elements. Uh, so if I want, if I, let's say I want, I have all these divs and I want them to be, I want to use display flex to have them on one row. Let's, let's take five minutes to experiment with that. Experiment with the CSS of this uh, website to get all the elements in one row using flex. Let's take five minutes for that.
shit. Okay, so I saw some of you got it. Some of you have um, were exploring other uh, stuff as well. So what should I do here to make all of these divs that are uh, that have that black border be on one row? What would I need to change to my CSS? So what would I need to change here? Yes, Jonathan? Do you need the body tag? Yes, you could use the body tag. So the body tag, and then what do I want to do with this? So, and why the body tag? Right, uh, sort of. like. We want the body tag because the body tag is the container of all the divs. In this case, we could we could have the body tag. Um, we could also just create another div that wraps the entire all the divs and give that a, an ID or a class name, uh, and then just grab that. In this case, it's fine to grab the the body um, and make it display flex. So let's see what that did. Save that and refresh, and we get. Uh, everything in one line, right? By default, was the flex direction uh, on a flex container? Row, Row correct. And uh, what's the the align items default? Stretch, that's why we get uh, all of them the same height. They're being stretched um, along the Cross axis, right? Uh, but what if? Why am I getting this? Like, some are uh, the size seems to not be the width seems not to be respected. This is actually an honest question. I I don't know, and I I, I saw some of you fixed it, and I was wondering how you did so. To to have. Uh, to give a little bit more space to every one of the divs so to change the width. Uh, Owen? Inline flex. So change that. Nice. Ah. This is pretty cool. Do you remember when we were reading versus uh, block versus inline block versus inline? That I type inline block versus block. This. We saw that this that was sort of confusing. Inline elements cannot have a width and a height set. Uh, but inline blocks respect top and bottom margin and respect height and width. So it seems that this also applies to to flex blocks. Once we have once these be, uh, this, these become flex items, they will not respect the the width. So once we say inline flex, they will respect its width. And then in this case, we got uh, width, um, I think 300 pixels or something like that.
Yeah, 350. So in here, let's look at it here changing as well. Let's hit the body. The body is the flex container, and if we change this to flex, we get that flex flow root. Well, there is so many inline flex, inline grid, inline table. But uh, the main ones to see here is flex, inline flex, and flex. So let's do let's do another Google search. Let's do flex versus inline flex and another good stack overflow question what's the difference between inline flex and flex so this person is asking the question and we have a selected answer inline flex does not make flex items display inline it makes the flex container display inline that is the only difference between display inline flex and display flex a similar comparison can be made between inline block and block and pretty much any other display okay so and then the the question goes into something else Okay, so there is this other uh, accompanying note. The difference between block layout and inline layout are outside of the scope of this question, but the one that stands out the most is auto width. Block level elements stretch horizontally to fill the containing block, whereas inline level boxes shrink to fit their content. In fact, it's for this reason alone that you will almost never use display inline flex unless you have a very good reason to display your flex container inline. Um, I'm still a little bit not satisfied with these answers. Well, how could we ask this question on Google to see why does the let's do elements with Okay, so it seems that it's taking us to the same to the CSS trick. So maybe maybe here we have something. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna do command F to search with. Oh, there's no matches. Seems that it's still loading. My computer is slow. So this is the first mention that we get of width. Flux basis. This defines the default size of an element before the remaining space is distributed. It can be a length or a keyword. The auto keyword means look at my width or height property, which was temporarily done by the main. Okay. Oh, so it seems that we have this property called flex basis that is applied to the 
um, to the items. So the flex basis property is applied to the items. Let's let's play with that. Go here. Let's leave. Oh no, not this one. Let's leave our body to be flex. We get that. And now let's try to grab all the divs and make it flex basis. Let's see what this does. Oh, wait, was it flex basis? So it can be it can be a, any length or, or auto. So let's do let's go here. Oh, I should just in here. Flex basis. So it's very likely that by default our flex basis will be auto. Uh, and the, remember, this is a property that is all, is set not in the container, but in the the items inside of the container. In this case, these divs. Uh, let's see if does it any of these do anything. Okay, nothing. Let's do let's try a hundred pixels. That seems that didn't do anything. to 500 pixels and that is still not doing anything uh, could you share that on slack wait and what if what if we do in the body, what if we do flex wrap? Wrap. Huh. This is interesting. We have, now they are, they have more space. And let's see, is every div 350 pixels wide? No, no, everyone is more than that. Let's go back here. Oh, but then flex spaces does affect it here. So you saw, I, I did, so there's a couple things going on. One is the flex wrap will affect the size of the uh, flex items inside of the container. Uh, let's look at that. So here, this is the div as the way that we had it. Now I do body and I change the flex wrap and that affects the width of our elements. Um, but once we do flex wrap, now our elements are respecting is uh, width, which is 350 pixels, and we can see it verified here that we have 350 pixels. Um, and then, if I if that's if that's not what I want, I could use flex spaces to say how wide I want these elements to be. So we could think. So we see that it's almost as if by default flex spaces was something small. What if we have auto. But, okay, so what do we take away from this? Oh. Actually, let's take five minutes, talk among yourselves as to um, the relationship between wrap around the row and the width of the children element while I get my
So it seems that this article here might uh, shine some light of what we're seeing. Controlling rations of flex items along the main axis. Uh, but we're not going to get to cover this uh, right now. We can see yeah, it's talking about the available pixels and how it's going to calculate. Um, that's a recommended uh, read. Okay, so let's do, let's get through this. Um, let's refresh this. Um, so let's do in our CSS, not only give it flex, but let's do flex wrap. Let's have it wrap. Save that. When we come here and refresh, now we get, well, because I have it um, in the, I have my window to occupy the, the half my screen, but if I go in here, I should see it. So it's somewhat responsive now. At least elements will uh, go to the bottom if they don't fit on the same line, right? Uh, but let's do, right now, all of them are of the same height because as we saw, um, align items will be uh, by default stretch. So let's do, um, actually let's look at here. We have, let's do align item center. Let's see what that gives us. Center. Say that. We said a line center will do. Now a line center gives us that this. So. A line item center. So so. So what I said just a few few seconds ago was wrong, which is not the justify items is stretch, but the wait, which which one did I specify here? The align items. The align items uh, will affect the align items affects the oh the align items affects the cross axis. So if we have if we have this, we have one row. The align item is affecting the in this case the cross axis, which is the um, vertical axis, therefore the width. And by default, we saw that align items default is stretch. So I was mixing uh, align items with justify content. Uh, here is we go to our CSS. We have a line item center, so it's no longer stretched. The items no longer occupy the entire, or they no longer will be as big as the biggest um, item. Join. Mm -hmm. So if you, you mean if you remove the flex wrap? Oh, you're saying you have a different order display, flex wrap, and align items. You have okay. Uh, uh, make sure that you don't have your screen too small because then that will affect it. Maybe, maybe, uh, Winter, can you take a look? Everyone else was able to see uh, this affecting their page? Okay. So now let's do align items. No, now let's do justify content that affects the main axis. Let's do, what if we do flex start? Actually, do that and let's tell me what you get. <laughs> uh, 
I think somebody said it. No change. Because justify content will, what if we do uh, space between or space around? I changed to space between. Actually, let's just do this. Save. Fresh. Now we have some space around. So that's sort of nice. Let's do what if I want to align all of them at the top? Here, let's do flex start. Now they're aligned at the top. Then we, when we resize, we see how it will behave on different screen sizes. Uh, it doesn't let me go any smaller than this, but if I add zoom, then I get that. Okay, was everyone able to resize the window and, and see how it will um, your content will get moved around. Cool. So I'm just going to get back to have this CSS properties that the lecture specify. Display flex, wrap, justify content center. And line item center. Let's see what this uh, produces in our HTML. Refresh, and we get this. So the the content will be on the horizontal or vertical axis, uh, be in the center. Therefore, we see that. Basically, yeah, again, center on both the horizontal and the vertical axis. And then we can resize this, which is, this is nicer, somewhat nicer. Right. Okay, what if we, so the last thing that we're going to see is something called, uh, is not, doesn't pertain only to CSS Flexbox, but it with, is related to how we can change content uh, around, or how can we adjust the content depending on the um, the width that our window is, basically, or whether they do it, they're looking at it on their phone, or even uh, whether this page is being printed on paper or not. We could even uh, I don't know. Have you seen that sometimes you go to a website and you try to print the website? And it looks completely different. That's because with CSS, you could even control what it's going to look like once you print it. Uh, and most websites will remove just stuff that you don't need to be printed on. Sometimes, sometimes you do. Sometimes those websites will remove stuff that you want actually to print. Um, but then now that you know CSS, you could poke around in the CSS and remove those rules, and it will print whatever you want it to print. Um, Okay, so those, that thing that I'm talking about uh, are what is, are called uh, media queries. So that name comes from you want to ask. Um, so a website has the 
and a, web, a website with CSS has the ability to ask uh, what uh, media is going to be seen or uh, access. That can be a screen or can be paper. I think it can even be a screen reader. Uh, so you're querying basically, you are asking, the website has the ability to ask uh, where, is, where am I being seen? Am I being seen on a screen? Am I being seen uh, just before printing? Or am I being seen by a screen reader? So what we could do is we could tie that. Uh, we can say if the website is being viewed on a screen and that screen is um, whatever size we pick uh, wide, then we can apply some style. If it's if it's wider, then we, we apply uh, different styles to change the content um, around. So uh, let's, let's, let me just refresh my memory on this media queries. Oh, so actually, this is what we want. We want to produce this result. Um, oh, I think, oh, I, don't, I guess I don't get this result because I have this photo that we didn't have in this screenshot. Oh, no, no, so the problem that we're going to fix is with, uh, thanks to media queries, is that on, let me just put this back to 100%. The thing is, if I look at this website in my phone, by clicking here, the toggle device toolbar. I have to put this on the side. Um, I want iPhone X. Uh, <laughs> I have this bug that I don't know where it's coming from, but it's making my header be huge. Uh, what happens if I just remove this? Delete element. No, so all the text is just huge. So that, let's just look at the CSS. Where do we say font size, 40 pixels? I guess I'll need to demonstrate this on Firefox then. For some reason, my Chrome is making my size really big. I don't know if it's because I have zoom in here. Oh, there you go, I just refreshed. So, let's go back here. So you see, no software is perfect. Nor the one that you're going to write, nor the one that has been uh, written by thousands of people that the collaborators. Um, so okay, here, I'm on my iPhone X, and look at my website, it looks, it looks really tiny. I have to like, um, I'll have to like zoom in with my fingers to be able to see the text. Right? So it will be really handy if we could uh, detect what kind of screen and how wide the screen is. And if it's, if it's too narrow, if it's not wide enough, we increase the font size. But if it's, if it's wide enough, like if they're looking at the website on a laptop, you don't want to, you want a different, uh, a different font size, basically. So here the font on my phone is really hard to see. And you will still have the two columns, right? We may not want the two columns once we're on our phone. Um, that's that in part of what's making in the text be so small as well. Uh, actually, even if we had one column, let's do like, let's disable all this. This is what we get. Ah. I need refresh, but this is what we get, right? Our content is like too tiny. Uh, really, like in, in your phone, if this is your phone screen, uh, you can see it's not even half the width of your screen. So that text is really, really small if you look at it on your phone. Um, so that's where media queries, uh, the last section of our um, lesson comes in. And we're not gonna have, we only have 10 minutes. Uh, but I think it should be so much straightforward. What we could do is have the CSS ask what 
what media is being uh, the website accessed on and other properties of the media uh, that we can see. One of those is the width. So what we can do here is go to our CSS. Um, media queries can be written anywhere. Um, I oftentimes will write them at the top or at the bottom. Uh, right now I'm going to do it here at the bottom. And I'm going to say, uh, I think it's media. So the, what do you call this symbol? At? I feel like there must be another more complicated name for it, but let's just do that. No, this, the ampersand is this one. Anyway, the at media, and then you say, what media do you want to query? In this case, I want to query the screen. Oh. Uh, actually, I'm forgetting this. Yeah, screen. So if you wanted to affect the style of that, of that, that will, how your website will look once you print it, I think you will do media print. But in this case, let's do just media screen. Screen and then, and if that screen is, let's just do, let's actually just see what this does. Max width. 2800 pixels, um, we do that. So this is our first media query. That, this would allow us to apply styles to HTML elements only if these conditions are met, which is the, the website is being seen on a screen and the width of that screen is at least 800 pixels. So. Let's look at what happens if we do color to color all, oh actually, in here, we actually have to write the CSS roles. So here we write sort of like nested inside, we have, um, I'm gonna do body, body. I wanna change the color of the body for now. I wanna do color, uh, green, Gold rod. So add this media query and inside uh, add the rule for the body color to be golden rod. And I said these rules that we write inside a media, media query will only apply if the conditions set up by the me media query are true, are met. So now let's go back to our test. Um, let's go back, I'm going to exit from here, I want to refresh, and now my text is all golden rod. But look at what happens if I increase this past the 800 pixels. Now my text is black. So now all the text is black, now all the text is golden rod. So in this way, we are affecting um, the color text, right? Depending on, on the size. So basically the max width says, um, apply the rule as long as the width of the screen is not greater than 800 pixels. So anything lower than 800 pixels wide will be golden rod. Everything past that, just the default, they don't, they select the media query doesn't apply anymore. There's styles with the rules uh, inside that media query don't apply anymore. And therefore we get um, just the default style, whatever we specify outside of the media query. Also you can see if, let's get back to here. Uh, you can see that once I select the body, I can see the media query applying here. Media screen and then the max width and the color golden rod. Right? If I make this greater than 800 pixels, that media query doesn't apply anymore. We don't see it in here anymore. 
So just in the way that we can control the color based on how wide the screen is, we can control anything we can control with CSS. That is height, width, um, yeah, the possibilities are uh, only limited by our, by our imagination. So let's go here, let's fix, let's fix this problem that we had that when we're in our phone, it looks tiny by saying, so let's look at how wide is our phone. Our phone. So our phone, let's say we have an iPhone X that is 375 pixels wide and 812 pixels high. So let's change it so that instead of being 800, once it reaches 375, some styles will apply. So I'm gonna do here. Um, let's do 375. In fact, if I, let's go here to like 100. Now I refresh and my color is still black in here. Why do you think it's still black? What does this tell us about max width? It says that it's not, it's not including 375. See, I think I'll need to either go 76 or 74. I think 74. Oh no. Still not applying. Let's uh, let's make sure there's not a bug in our refresh this. Oh I think So it's not applying. So what this is saying is, I'm wrong. And I don't understand max width. So let's look at max width. Oh, actually, it's uh, not with CSS media query. Media. Let's look at these examples. So this is an example. On screens that are 99, 9, 992 pixels or less, set the background color to blue. On screen, so max width is that or less. So in our example, and then we also have I think we also have like mean width uh, as well, but like this, this is a good example where we have this uh, on, so we're seeing the background color blue, the color of the text is white, and if we resize this, then it changes. Now the, this one is applying, which is the 600 rule. The background color is olive, the text is wh white, and I think for getting the other one, oh, even the zoom will affect that. Um, now we get the third one. Max width. Am I mixing something? 374 max width. Bingo, I think that's it. Because the default CSS or the CSS that was there will have more weight than the media side, the media screen, I think. That's it. Let's put it at the top. Uh, let's put it in our phone. Uh, let's do this one uh, responsive. Nope. <laughs> T 
So let's pick a random number here before you. Let's do 600 pixels. This here. Okay, so mm, we will need to revisit this later on. Um, there is something I'm not understanding about max uh, with or the media queries. Um, so that's it for today. In the afternoon, we're going to be working in the lab that you will see in your Google Calendar. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, a really good, cool game called uh, Flexbox Froggy that will get us to practice about what we learn about Flexbox today. So that's it. Um, thank you. Give me one sec.